In the programme this time, Gary lifts the lid on a drain near an Indian restaurant. It's a horrendous smell coming out of the manhole. But Doreen's not in the mood for takeaway. <laughs> Horrible curry smell. A pest controller gets the run around. Right, we know where they live in. And battling grime fighter Tommy Loftus goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Chinese restaurant manager. I'm not being funny, but there's only one Chinese restaurant here. I haven't got time for this. But first, in Ipswich, a council house has been recently vacated and a clean-up team has arrived to make the property ready for a new tenant. Sam, Cedric and Ray are the intrepid filth fighters charged with the task. OK, we don't know too much about this house. All we really know is there's quite a lot of clues, so that's all we've been told, so it'll be a bit of, a, a bit of an adventure to find out. The lads may know nothing of the recent history of this place. But as they start their inspection, they begin to piece together a puzzle. It's like somebody who likes collecting stuff. That normally tends to be an older person. Certainly, he wouldn't have been able to have a bath for quite a long time. The more they find, the more they learn. As you can see, he was very clean, looked after his whites. Um, as the boys did doing the other room, I'm going to do the kitchen and try to clear everything. With each new discovery, a picture is beginning to emerge. Shoes. Sure. Nice. It certainly doesn't look like an eviction. Normally with an eviction you can tell there's clues that somebody's been living here and causing a nuisance. I'd imagine this is just a case of someone getting a bit too old to, to manage on their own. Possibly a little bit of a hoarder. I mean, in here I've just found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven small portable radios in one carrier bag. It tends to be the older people who collect stuff, hoard stuff. And uh, I guess maybe if you've lived through the war and things, if you threw something out, you never knew when you were going to get another replacement. It's old music. It's sad, but once cherished possessions are now nothing more than junk. Poor old boy. The contents of a bag provides a further clue. I've just found in here a, uh, a sort of food parcel, really, but everything is out of date. Yeah, he likes his tea, doesn't he? I have seen this in a house clearance before where somebody was getting old and struggling a bit, and one of their neighbours was bringing them food parcels, uh, and they were so grateful, they were too polite to say they didn't actually like any of the food in it. Now, there's a shocking discovery. Yeah, definitely some rat droppings. And it gets worse. More rat droppings here. That's not one. I think that's a family of rats. It seems there was no part of the property that the tenant was not sharing with vermin. I've just found some on the um, chair here. So we might find a rat in here later. Who knows? Just have to wait and see. I think I might be in my bedroom. But the bedroom presents another problem entirely. Whoa. Wow. That's a lot of clothes. It looks like clothes upon clothes upon clothes. So where are we going to start then? What do you think? While Ray tries to make sense of it all, Cedric prepares himself for the challenge ahead. <laughs> At a Gloucestershire horse farm, a barn has become home to some countryside squatters. Ace Pest Controller Andrew Beddoes has been tasked with evicting the uninvited visitors. What's happened, we've had a lot of snow in this area and mice have moved in and they found some grass seed and some of the horse feed. They've got food, they've got harborage, they've got everything they possibly need. This is a rodent hotel. It's all very nice for the mice, but the barn owner is footing the bill. The bags are being damaged, so it's obviously a cost, and we've now got to, the mice have got to a stage where we really need to be looking at the numbers. But first, Andrew must make some careful decisions. Before we start baiting or trapping, I need to identify what it is, because rodenticide in the UK is approved for use solely for commensal rodents. Commensal means eating from man's table. Obviously, this is not man's table, so if these are field mice in what is very nearly their natural surroundings, it would be an offence for me to bait these with poison. Furthermore, Andrew wants to avoid any collateral damage. The use of rodenticides can, can be, cause real problem to wildlife. We've got a robin that's actually inside this building. 
So if, if the rodenticide was used, there is a chance that the, the, the robin would find it. We're going to get secondary poisoning. And now the pesky pest hunt is on and no bag will be left unturned. I'm looking for droppings. I'm looking for damage to the bags to see if it would give me any indication. We're starting to get some damage. As we get further down the pile, we should start to come across some mouse droppings. Oh, there you go. There it goes. It's mice. This one just run across the back. I, I, did, I didn't actually see which species it was. Um, he's probably going to run that way. Here's mouse. The mice may be nimble, but Andrew has picked up on their scent and is now hot on their trail. We've got a drop in here. So there's juvenile mice. Uh, there's a husk there. So we definitely got mice in the bales as well. I'm just going to have a quick look underneath this bale. No, the bale's not been there very long. That's unfortunate. Right, we'll move over and have a look over here then. Lots of droppings here. Lots of mice. We're getting close to the source of them. Right, we know where they live in. If you look in the end of this bale, there's going to be mice under this bale. There's the nest. I expected to see quite a few mice under there. You can see where this has all been eaten out, made a nice nest bottom of a bale, nice and warm, holes running through the bales, so this, this is where they've been breeding. It looks like these guests have gone sightseeing for the day. So it's now a matter of uh, trying to get some traps down, I think, because we've still not seen enough for me to be happy what the species is. Back in the vacated Ipswich Council House, the clean-up team are getting stuck into the job of clearing it out. That comes from the surface. So we're not going to share this one. We'll take it back to the family. Ooh, I'm off. Catch you later. While Cedric takes one lorry load of rubbish to the dump, Sam and Ray rip it up to start again. They're on a roll until Ray notices something sinister. Plug smell gas. I think we need to be a bit wary of this. Me and Sam were ripping up the living room carpet and just all of a sudden a, a whiff of gas. You go into the kitchen and sniff and that's covered in the smell. And obviously we want to make sure that if there is any gas leaking, we've sorted this out quicker rather than later. But it's not really something we're qualified to do. With a potential gas leak on their hands, the lads beat a hasty retreat. We think we can smell a bit of gas. OK, cheers him. All right, bye. Right, he's coming straight up. Supervisor Shane is soon on the scene. Well, as you said, there's a slight sort of gas in here, so obviously supervisors come around just to check it out, health and safety. But Shane, too, has difficulty finding the source of the leak. Might just been when they've moved the fire and disturbed some gas in it. Um, it's hard to sell. Obviously, if there was a clear gas smell, you'd better smell it quite distinctively. I'm having trouble smelling. It's not there. Should you hear? Should you hear? You can smell it. You can actually now. That is gas, actually. It's definitely gas. I'll open the windows and start this. Shane isn't sure and takes some precautionary measures. I mean, what was a helium, helium bomb? All the gas building up and there's something going bang. So. Uh, yeah, the supervisor's just been up and, and uh, he too can smell gas, so he's just going to get somebody up here who's properly trained to suss it up. Uh, so unfortunately, we've got a down tools till that's sorted out, which is a shame because we were doing well. Back at the Gloucester Mouse Motel, pest controller Andrew has been on a wild goose chase for some very elusive mice. But they won't be giving him the runaround much longer. I'm going to set some breakback traps. Anything that ventures in, it will kill it. Your mouse will come in through this way, he'll cut across it, and he will stand on the tread plate, which, when the, the, the trap is set, the bar comes over at a vast rate of knot and it's knots and it's an instant kill. Every time we've opened it and never found one that, that's been alive. Time to bait up with some tempting, tasty tidbits. I use either a chocolate spread or a, a peanut 
butter spread. I always bait at the top of the trap and then just a gentle bit there, a tiny little bit just so it wafts, the smell wafts out. Sometimes you'll set the traps and you won't catch anything if you use peanut butter. That's when we move over to chocolate, one of the chocolate spreads. Close the top of the box. Can you see the yellow bar in there? The yellow bar actually indicates that the trap is set. If something gets in there, you can see whether the trap's gone off or not. I'm actually going to put the boxes on the edge of the pallets, giving them enough run to come either side. Bear in mind we've put an attractant in there to encourage them to stick their head in the hole. And once they stick their head in the hole, I'm afraid that's the end of it. They won't be eating anything else. At this mouse motel, Andrew is happy to provide room service. I put two traps here, because if you look here, you can actually see this is grease uh, and urine from the mice. They're using this. This is uh, uh, a motorway for them. It isn't long before the guests feel peckish. Oh, one of them's gone off. There's a... Do you hear the twack? Here we go. House mice. Different ball game. Uh, we will trap these. They've come in in one of the bales, so uh, wherever this, this has come from has been stored, they've got a mouse problem. So that might be worth me giving them a ring, see if there's any work there as well. Coming up, Sam considers a career change. Perhaps I'll be invited to be the next James Bond. I don't know. Dreams do come true. Gary follows his nose and oh, lives yeah. to regret it. Absolutely full of fat in there. And Preston's proudest picks his moment to make his point. If they're caught on camera, they can't argue. £25 fine. It's not hard to find rubbish in most town centres, and Chelmsford is no exception. But today, environmental health officers Doreen and Gary are on their way to fight the filth that lies below. We're going down to a Chinese restaurant where we've had a report of a blocked sewer, uh, which could be causing problems in the kitchen, but it's also affecting other households. A quick look reveals the problem. Oh, yeah. Absolutely full of fat in there, which has obviously come back up the line from the restaurant. When food fat is washed down the sink, it solidifies in the drain. When restaurants do this, problems rapidly ensue. What you're seeing here is, is quite typical. If uh, takeaways or food premises don't have the correct procedures in place, the uh, fat is discharged down the sewer network and then obviously it leads to blockages and odour complaints. So we will need to speak to the uh, owner and uh, get this sorted out. Doreen thinks the food fat has come from a nearby Chinese restaurant and a back passage soon leads to a dodgy back door. Whoops. Well, that's come off. That's handy, isn't it? Thanks. Thanks. It's all right. Is it here? All right, OK. <laughs> Thank you for that. Once inside the kitchen, the truth is soon revealed. As you can see, there is quite a lot of fat oil and grease around the chamber, and pieces of that will break off and go down the sewer and cause point blockages. They've traced the problem to its source, and now they'll arrange to have it dealt with. Is it possible for somebody to be here about half past nine on uh, Wednesday? Wednesday. Yes, because right. they, they need to get the big jet arranged. In the meantime, there's a report of a second blockage nearby. It seems the culprit here is another restaurant, this time a curry house. I mean, if you look in there, you can clearly see massive, massive amount of fat. And you can obviously smell it. It's an horrendous smell coming out of the manhole. So we definitely need to do some work here. Oh, this could be a nightmare one to do, is not it? Yeah. Back in Ipswich, the source of the gas leak has been identified and isolated. Sam, Cedric and Ray have had the all clear and can get back to the job of clearing out the rest of the last tenant's belongings and what could be a real rat's nest. And we're keeping an eye out in case they're living in here, because obviously it would be nice and warm in here. Sam has a practical suggestion. It's too many just to take straight to the tip. We'll uh, see if we can find a local charity that will take them and get them reused. Good plan, Sam. However, with rats around, there's contamination, and sadly, everything must be destroyed. I got a suit from a charity shop last week. 
eight pound fifty. That's too expensive. No, really. And it fitted nicely. It looks good, so I bought it. It was a dinner dinner suit, didn't jacket yeah. and trousers. Oh, for your suit, eight pound for my James Bond do. Yeah. Okay. And it's a casino James Bond theme night. Perhaps somebody will see me in it, and uh, I'll be invited to be the next James Bond. I don't know. Dreams do come true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so do nightmares, especially if the owners of those rat's droppings are still around. Let's see if there's any rats underneath. No, nothing. No sign of rats. Not even droppings. Thank heavens for small mercies. Everything in here is bagged up now, bar a few little odds and ends. Uh, we can take these out to the vans now. Get the carpet up if we can. Cedric's already having a ripping time. I don't know why these boys are looking at me, you know? Yes. They always pick on me. <laughs> do, you know what? do you want to do this? No, you're doing a great job, Cedric. You keep going. Oh, yes. You're doing you. a great job. Yes, right. Job As you can see, the bedroom's clear now. Clothes gone, furniture's gone, carpet's gone. We're just letting the dust settle, literally, and then we'll come in and give it a sweep. You look tired, sir. Me? Mm -hmm. I am. Sam, Cedric and Ray have moved a mountain, and now they can take stock of the situation. Well, that's all done in there now, uh, and I think the carpenters and decorators will be coming in probably within 48 hours. In this place, could we have a new resident in a couple of weeks, which would be great. Cheers. Back in Chelmsford, the food fat encrusted drain is coming in for some stick. So what we're doing now is using what we call gully grabs to try and grab the fat off the bench because it's the safest way to do it and it saves seven to wash the fat down, which could cause a block further on. So we're just trying to take out as much as we can. Disturbing the fat like this releases some less than fragrant odours. The smell of this is horrendous. Uh, this is one of the main problems that we have is that we get a lot of odour complaints based on the fat, oil and grease that's put down the sewer. <laughs> Horrible curried smell of rancid grease. That's even vile. But filth breeds filth. The other problem with having all the fat, oil and grease in the sewers is that it's likely to attract rats. So the last thing we want is to have a rat infestation around here. But the fat and the smell have got to go. We'll wash down the walls in there with disinfectant, put the lid down, and job done. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going to be anywhere near that when that's started up. I don't fancy that's going all over me. There are several techniques that are used to clear drains of blockages. High pressure water is the order of the day today. And it's an effective weapon of choice. But the battle is far from over. Now the filth fighters will confront the filth maker. Mr. Mia, that's not very nice, is it? Yeah. Well, you can, can you see all the fat in here? Yeah. That's really revolting. We'll have to clean it every week, so I think you might need well, to do it twice I think a week. Then. I think somebody forgot yeah. to clean it this week. What we're going to do is we've got a leaflet here. You can clearly see that uh, the things that you can do in green and the things that we don't want you to do in red. We'll do that, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. I will always try my best. You know. I know you do. I know you do. Make... Here, have a look at the paperwork we give him, which shows him the do's and don'ts of, of what's done in the kitchen, and uh, we'll come back and see him in a, in a couple of months' time. Yeah. Drain unblocked, advice dispensed. Gary and Doreen are off to find another filthy foe. Tommy Loftus is the pride of Preston. He used to be a soldier, but Tommy's traded in his gun and bayonet for a litter picker and a high-vis jacket. One of the main things you have to look out for when doing this job that because you, your head's down all the time, that you don't walk into people or hit them with the uh, your pickers. Not only that, when you get close to the road, they don't get hit by a passing car. So you have to have your, your wits about you at all times. Because you do have to find 
Then you get a comedian behind you who start throwing things at you just for, just for a big laugh. Tommy's also a bit of a gadget man. In fact, he's at the cutting edge of filth fighting. The camera is the last resort against litter louts. If a person drops litter, I'll ask them to pick it up. If they refuse to pick it up, I'll issue them with a fixed penalty notice. If they're caught on camera, they can't argue. £75 fine. We've got to try to educate them. You see, there is 10% who will never use a bin, even if you push it on the nose. Them people, you have to hit their pockets, find them. Now Tommy's hot on the heels of some fly tippers. I've just found some dumpings, which I'm just about to examine to see, to ascertain to where they've come from. At the moment, I can't determine it, because it actually looks like it's coming from somebody's house. I will now check the next bag. I'm looking here, I'm pretty sure, just looking at that, that's coming from a Chinese restaurant. It's the fact they're all in noodle sticks. But in the meantime, I'm going to have a quick word with the manager of the Chinese restaurant and see, do, can you show any light on where the bags have come from? Excuse me, do, do them two bags out there belong to you? Yeah, the great bags out here, love. Are they yours? They can. No, the bags. These here, they've been dumped. No. Well, they're obviously from a Chinese restaurant, and you're the only one in the vicinity. It's not mine. Well, I'm not being funny, but there's only one Chinese restaurant here, and nobody's going to bring them from outside and bring them here. Okay, I ask for them. Okay. Pardon? Because um, um, it's the outside, you know the. Well, look, I, I haven't got time for this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this away as evidence and give it to our uh, enforcement officers, and they're going to look into this. Thank you. I'll now leave it for enforcement to deal with. Onwards and upwards, I think. The message is clear. Don't tip your litter out when techno Tommy's about.